You are about to see a world where greed and deceit raise their ugly heads, where lives have been needlessly lost, and where hope, the most precious gift of all, is peddled at a price. This is the wickedness in the world of faith healing. And tonight, I take an ordinary man and attempt to turn him into a faith healer, putting him on stage in Texas, the heart of the Bible Belt, where he must convince an audience of staunch believers that he's capable of performing miracles before their very eyes. Welcome to the show. Faith healing is based on the religious belief that chosen individuals can channel the Holy Spirit to cure anything from the common cold to cancer. You're going to see people's arms grow out who have no arms. Not only will the lame be healed, but the maimed will be healed. But in this world, if you want to be cured, you're often encouraged to dig deep and donate. Now you can make checks payable, of course, to Benny Hinn Ministries. If you're using your credit cards, make sure to put your name, your account number, your expiration date, and sign what it says signature. Whether to many believers, it's an acceptable route to health and happiness. Some faith healers may truly believe in what they're doing, but to me, it's a highly dangerous scam. I don't believe that uh, faith healers are somehow channeling the Holy Spirit. I think that they are using the same tricks that hypnotists and magicians and phony psychics use to manipulate an audience. And despite what they claim, no healer has ever been able to produce a single piece of evidence for a single miraculous healing ever having actually occurred. But despite this, they still fill huge venues, uh, not just in America, but in the UK and all over the world. And they, the top ones are multi-millionaires. And what upsets me most is when they blame their victims for not having enough faith when they find that nothing's changed. It was obvious from the outset that for this project to have any chance of success, every stage would need to be shrouded in secrecy, including the initial selection of our candidates. And so to begin, we set up a temporary new production company. We then advertised all over the UK that this company was looking for someone to be the star of their own TV show. What's particularly terrifying about this is that we can't say that it's a Darren Brown show, let alone what the show actually is, because everything has to be top secret. If any of this gets out, it just blows the whole project. 200 hopeful candidates were invited to audition and show off their talents. To be... Of various kinds. Or not to be. Unbeknownst to them, I was watching in order to decide who had the qualities I would need for a fake faith healer. And I was looking for a number of things at this stage. Loose objects in the aeroplane now start flying around. Confidence, charisma and stage presence. And a bit of an edge. Outside your fucking eyes out! Too much of an edge. After watching and assessing all the applicants, I then had to choose which of them I thought could pull off the monumental pretense of being a faith healer. So these were the final four that I took through to the next round. You know, I feel sorry for people that don't drink. Dom, I really like. A tribute singer by trade, he's warm and instantly likeable. Yeah, we good? You want a stopwatch? Nathan, a scuba diving instructor, I can see commanding a room. He seems a little headstrong, but that could really help him. And Libcom, sounds like an evil corporation from one of those Terminator movies. Stuart runs a media production company and has presenting experience, which might give him the confidence that he'll need. You know the bit where they talk about cabin pressure dropping and oxygen mask appearing? Here's what they don't tell you. Jim is a public speaker, he looks the part, he has an easy air of authority and a calm and professional delivery. Up till now, Dom, Nathan, Jim and Stuart all understood they were auditioning to be the star of their own show, but they have no idea that one of them will become my fake faith healer. And even now, they still can't know the full story. Although by revealing my involvement, it'll probably stoke their curiosity further. Afternoon. Oh, hello. Oh, fuck. Now, they lied to us. They yeah. said we were going to be pleasantly surprised. Nathan, now we're checking ourselves. Dominic, I'm here to meet you. And Jim. Pleasure. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> First of all, congratulations on everything so far. Today, I'm going to be teaching you a skill, which is the next part of your journey, if you like. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to hypnotise. This cool. is today's... 
Oh, Project's all. Tomorrow, you'll be giving a show. It will be a live show in front of a live audience. Now I know that Darren's involved, it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Seeing Darren was obviously quite a shock, but, you know, a really good one. You thought it was maybe going to be, you were going to be kind of the focus, and then it feels like maybe Darren's the focus. My confidence has evaporated. So you've all got pens and paper. They don't realise it, but this is an important step in trying to create a faith healing act. A stage hypnotist and a faith healer may seem to be a world apart, but there are some key similarities. A stage hypnotist puts his volunteers into a suggestible state with an induction at the beginning of his act. At a faith healing event, the same effect is achieved, but indirectly. Throughout the course of the service, constant shifts from upbeat to meditative music and chanting put the congregation into a trance-like state by repeating trigger phrases, <laughs> as in these examples with the renowned Benny Hinn. <laughs> a faith healer can then create amazing scenes of mass hysteria, in much the same way that a stage hypnotist can get his volunteers to perform all manner of out-of-character stunts. It's important that they, you know, you tell them to still breathe normally, you don't want them kind of becoming uncomfortable. They'll only have a few hours of training and then they'll have to put on a hypnosis show in front of an audience that thinks they are professional hypnotists. Some people you see really kind of struggling, almost laughing at it themselves. They're normally going to be really lively people up on stage. It's a massive challenge for anyone to put on a hypnosis show after such a small amount of training. And whilst everyone is doing their best to take on the skills required, I'm not convinced that Stuart quite has what it takes. As a result, I think it would be unfair to put him in front of an audience the following day. So, Stuart will now be leaving the process. I hope you've had a great it's been time. Fantastic. Thank I really, you. really appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming and being Good to meet you. I have to be ruthless now. I have to work with the three strongest characters. Tonight's the night where I have to choose my fake faith healer. I've never taught hypnosis, let alone in only six hours, so I don't really know if this will work. They'll all do the same routine in a fixed amount of time and each of them will have a fresh audience of 100 people who all believe they're seeing an experienced stage hypnotist perform. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you for coming. Please welcome onto this lovely little stage, Mr. Jim Ewan. Come in, Jim. So who would like to be the first up on the stage? Come on now. To hypnotize effectively, you need confidence and an understanding of suggestion. First of all, I want you to just relax. Some subjects, naturally responsive, will relinquish control. Their imaginations become open to instructions the hypnotist gives them. You have forgotten your name. So to start, the performer tells them they cannot remember their own name, and those who believe him create a mental block and stop themselves from finding it. Now. Remember me? My name is Jim. And, and you're, um, you're what? <laughs> Sorry, you're, and the harder you're... they try, the more impossible it becomes. Oh. Your name is? They call me Baldy. They call you <laughs> Baldy? I don't think I've ever forgotten my name. I do, I do. I know it. We know you do, Harry. We know you do. The best so subjects hot. are kept and conditioned it's to hot. respond more dramatically. So incredibly hot! <laughs> Despite so little training, our three performers do very well. I make sure everyone is properly dehypnotized and go off to make the very difficult choice as to who my fake faith healer will be. So having seen the three shows, I have now made my decision um, of which of these three men will become our faith healer. Jim probably lacks the energy and punch that he's going to need for this. Dom is a nice guy, but this isn't about being a nice guy, so I'm going to go with Nathan. I think Nathan has the edge. He's also got a harder exterior, and I think that could really work for him, because we, we don't know really what we're going to be walking into. Um, and he seems to be very good at just thinking on his feet and enjoying the kind of adrenaline of, of performing. So I'm going to ask Nathan. However, he won't necessarily want to do it. We don't know, and if he doesn't want to do it, we are stuck. But Nathan's the man I'm going to ask. The time has come to find out Nathan's answer. Nathan, come down. Both I and my team are aware that our hard work could be for nothing, as Nathan, who believes in God, may not want to involve himself in this project. Excellent. First of all, out of all of those people up and down the country who auditioned for this, you are our chosen one. Am I? OK. So congratulations, Thank you first very much. of all. Uh, up until now, you haven't been told what the project is. Turn around, please.
Nathan, Nathan, you are about to enter the world of the faith here. This is a multi-million dollar industry where people pay for empty promises in Jesus' name. If you accept this challenge, Darren will teach you the tricks and techniques to make the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. Once you have honed these skills, you will travel with Darren to Texas, one of the most religious states in America, to reveal one of the most questionable practices within the Christian church. Darren needs your help to expose this cruel scam by becoming a faith healer yourself. Nathan, are you ready for the performance of your life? I think we've been rumbled. Have we been naive? Yes. yes. So we're going undercover to Texas to expose what I believe is the ugly truth behind the world of faith healing. And I would be doing this myself, but I might get recognized out there. So we're setting up an ordinary guy as a, as a faith healer to show that you don't need any Holy Spirit or special gifts uh, in order to do this. Just a few months ago, I began my search for someone I could turn into a faith healer. I've chosen Nathan, a scuba diving instructor, as that person. But up until this point, he's had no idea what he's really been auditioning for. Faith healers claim that the Holy Spirit uses them to heal the sick, the blind, the deaf, people with cancer, AIDS. The impact of this is that people donate, often huge sums of money. Some of them donate their life savings and that people also throw away their medicines. So a lot of people get worse and some people die uh, because they believe that they're healed when they're not. This isn't about faith and it isn't about God and it isn't about the church, it isn't about religion. It is about greed and about a very specific scam. I'm doing this because I want to draw people's attention to this particular form of fraud. But to do that, we will need a fake yeah. faith healer. But you're up for it? Oh yeah. I'm afraid to give it a go. I just um, the enormity of it. I think that'll probably sink in as I learn more about what we're doing. You will need this. It is the King James Version. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks, Derek. Cheers. My gut reaction to, you know, coming up, seeing this project and understanding what it is my part is to play in it. Um, it's the scale of it. It's the gravity of just how important religion is to people and how much they take it to them, to their very centre, to their core. Um, and therefore, in this instance, especially when there's money involved, the protection around that and how good I'll have to be, if you like, to infiltrate that and actually seeing what that reaction is, indeed surviving that reaction possibly. So, to my relief, Nathan is up to the challenge. The first thing to do is to give him a fake name. I've decided on Pastor James Collins. James is fitting as it's a religious name, but even better, it gives him the very biblical initials of JC. I know that when we make inroads to America, people are going to ask questions and investigate his background, so the next step is to create a fake website. Pastor James needs to have an identity and a history that would look real to anyone looking him up on the internet. But like other faith healers, Pastor James has a ministry, which I've decided to call the Gifts of the Spirit. And what's the reason that his soon-to-be congregation in America hasn't heard of him before? Well, that's because he's been healing the sick in Africa. Within days, yeah. giftsofthespiritministry.com is up and running. Feel free to check it out yourself after the show. My team spends weeks trying to convince over a hundred Texan churches to allow Pastor James to preach his gospel to their following. Hi there, I'm calling from uh, Big Wonder Films. I represent uh, Pastor James Collins. This will help establish Pastor James's credibility and will also enable him to publicize the big revival event we're planning to stage at the end of our week in Texas. And they're just not, they're just not responding at all. However, not one church returns our calls or helps in any way. So we decide to hire a Texan Christian PR company run by a guy we're going to refer to here as Peter to protect his identity. By using Peter and his contacts, it is our only chance to guarantee an audience for our final show in Dallas. We need this man's help. Nathan, a scuba diving instructor, will need a whole new range of skills to pull this off. And so I've put together a small team of specialists that will help me teach him everything he needs to know. 
This is Jeff Coleman, who's head of acting at the prestigious Central School of Speech and Drama. I'm a little bit terrified about the task in hand. I'm hoping Jeff can help me turn Nathan into a faith healer by installing techniques a method actor would use to prepare for a role. So it's light and it's joyful. Mark Havel is a Christian who used to be active in the faith healing movement and has since turned against it. I went out to churches holding services and did the exact same things that you see on TV with his televangelists. And Woody Woods is a musician who was involved in the faith healing movement for 20 years until he became increasingly uncomfortable with how manipulative he perceived these services to be. The music always follows a certain pattern. Really, really fast songs to start off. The congregation would be whipped into a frenzy. After that, they'd go around with the offering, you know, telling people to sow their seed. Right, thank you very much. I ask Woody to teach Nathan how the services are actually run. Even though it, it doesn't have to be rigid, there has to be some, you know, a particular order of how it's done. I want you to give authority to that voice, Kiko. Thank you for the sun in the sky. He's basically already trying to break down the way I talk normally, so I can really sell myself as a preacher. Ready for more work? I need Nathan to sound like he's been preaching for years, so I ask Mark to train him intensively in the scriptures and show how they can be twisted to suit the motives of a faith healer. What you're getting today, as opposed to last week, are heresy lessons. Right. So there's a very real and serious side to this in terms of your talking about real faith versus something which is effectively a counterfeit. And then you're looking out the audience and you're seeing these pockets of light in people. I work with him on his act. The Lord showed me this here. Can you see that? If I, That's hot. And the whole variety of tricks that I believe are being used. I do take my hat off to him because he's trying to learn something that takes years to learn. Pray, he's going to be healed. Yeah. He's going to be healed. I have moments where I'm feeling more prepared and then I think I have moments where you just realise well, actually, I've only just learned a little bit, and that just means I've learned that there's a whole lot more that I need to know. But there are so many little details that could slip him up, such as his Ugandan background. So Nathan has to squeeze into his already packed schedule, learning some basic Swahili. Kahawa. Coffee? Deal. I don't think he realises how much work he's got to do. It's really a huge challenge. I think we'll do it. Actually, I hope, almost hope and pray that we will. To know that these people are being abused or mistreated because of their faith is, is disgusting. So I feel responsible to do this job as well as possible. We've researched the major miracles that faith healers perform, and now I want to show Nathan what I believe lies behind them. Today, you are going to witness the miraculous. The blind will see, and the deaf will hear, limbs will grow out these are faith healing miracles and I'm going to show you how to perform them Just take these hearing aids out you foul spirit of deafness take your hands off this woman in Jesus name how do I sound now <laughs> loud loud here is a popular miracle of making you know, the deaf hear I'm going to demonstrate this and some other miracles exactly as they might be presented at a faith healing event like the one you can see here and now you can hear Yes. The people you see being healed at these events are selected by the faith healer's team, the catchers, who bring them up on stage to present them to the healer. Darren, this lady's been deaf since birth. All of our volunteers have genuine registered disabilities. I've merely asked them to respond completely honestly and imagine they were at a real event with an audience. You can lip read? Okay. This woman has been deaf since she was born. She doesn't know what it is to hear. So you can, you can read my lips. So I'm going to turn away and say a word. 27. Nope, she can't hear. She needs to lip read to hear what I'm saying. Let's heal these ears. She hasn't heard a word for 39 years. Without lip reading, she doesn't know what I'm saying to her. Heal this woman. Restore. Her hearing, I hate those devils of deafness, I hate those devils of deafness, and I cast them out now. I command this hearing to be restored, to be restored now. <sighs> How many clicks? It's three. Say, Jesus. Jesus. She's no longer lip reading. A miracle seems to have happened. But before I explain this, let's see another one, this time with someone who's registered blind. Darren's 
Ian. Mm -hmm. He's been blind since birth. Been blind since birth. And how old are you now, Ian? Uh, 46. This man is 46. He has been blind since birth. This man has never been able to see. He doesn't know what it's even like to be able to see. Take a step forward for me. Let's start praying. <sighs> Father, I command those devils of blindness to come out of this man. I command in Jesus' name those devils of blindness to leave this man in Jesus' holy name. Spirit, fall upon this man. Heal this man. Bring him back up. Bring him back up. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Father, open this man's eyes. Ian, how many fingers am I holding up? Tell me how many fingers. Two. He sees. Lord be praised, this man sees. Ian, I've got a handkerchief. Take the handkerchief from me. Take it from me. Follow me around. Come on, follow me around. Somebody praise the Lord. This man can see his sight is restored. These are the miracles. Who believes in miracles? He's been healed from blindness, but let's go back to Sophie and find out a little more. Have I just really healed you of deafness? No. You are moderately deaf. You're essentially hearing impaired. Hmm. Yes. You can't really hear if I, without your hearing aid, if I face the other way. Mm, but all not... the clicks and everything, you can hear anyway. Yes. Yeah. And you're not healed because, well, nothing's, nothing has changed. In a similar way, although Ian has genuinely been blind since birth, like most registered blind people, he has some impaired vision. And with the right lighting, he can see blurred shapes and colours, enough to see the number of fingers I was holding against my dark jacket. Tell me how many fingers. Two. Enough to see my bright handkerchief. And of course, his hearing helps him follow me around the room. Follow me around. Come on, follow me around. Both of these major miracles are created by allowing the audience to be misled about the extent of someone's real condition, then presenting things they can already do as evidence of change, when actually they're just the same as they were before. In Jesus' name, left leg, I command you grow. You can witness another popular miracle that faith healers often claim by typing street faith healer leg into YouTube. Uno, dos, this impressive demonstration has been performed and filmed in a guerrilla style all over the world. I'm going to show you how this works with my co-writer, Ian Sharkey, who genuinely has arthritis and back problems. Started in my hips, has now moved into kind of top of my spine, my back, hands. There's always something somewhere that's, that's yeah. kind of constantly in pain. You just, you know, you okay. know. Classically, what spinal arthritis will do is it'll shrink, as the muscles shrink, it'll shrink one of your legs back, which I think in your case it looks like it's... Looks like he's on this side. Can I bring your legs out? Excuse me. Nathan, do you want to come and have a look at this? Um, oh, yeah, that's a good couple of inches shorter. Can you see, Nathan, this leg here has shrunk a couple of inches. Can you see the difference between if you look at the heels? So what we're going to do is we're going to heal the arthritis in your spine. Father, cast out that devil of arthritis. Grow this leg. It's grow. I can feel now. I can feel that in my hand. I can feel this start to grow. It's like the foot is... Look, you can see. You can see it's coming down to the length of the other foot. Now you can feel that. Can you see this? Can you see that? That is, it's filling out. The calf is extending. The feet are now even. Those legs are now the same length. And you can feel that subside, yes? Yeah. Pain gone? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. St now, stand up for me. Can you stand up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> run around, run around. Let me see, let me see. Just, just... Easy. How's your spine feeling at the moment? Uh, fine, fine. Genuinely? Yeah. Yeah, you're not making this up. The spine no, no, is no, no, fine. No, 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 your no. Leg, you saw that happen, didn't you? You saw that leg extending. You saw it, yes? This is all based on something that I put a lot of emphasis on this foot here, but as is what will be pretty obvious to <laughs> most people at home, as uh, whenever you see them do this on YouTube, there's always a point, they bring the legs up, then they ask for the camera to come in, and all that's happening at that point is they just loosen one shoe. Not the shoe we're all looking at, but the other shoe. All the trick is going to be is, while we're talking about this, this leg lengthening, I'm just moving this shoe. Is sliding it back on the back on the heel. It's a very old, classic faith healer trick. But there's all sorts of other things I can make it sound like. Like I know this is going to hurt your hamstrings doing mm. this for a while. So I can say to you, you can feel this pain, can't you? So why don't we do this? And I say, and that pain's gone, isn't it? I lower your legs. You honestly will say yeah, yes. Yeah. But you're talking about this hamstring pain because of this. It's nothing to do with your spinal Abs pain. Absolutely. Likewise, when you stand up, you're not limping. There's no limping. Well, you weren't limping before. Mm. No one said you. you didn't say you were limping. No, no. You touch your toes jump around, you could do those things anyway. Absolutely. We said earlier on you're in pain all the mm -hmm. time, but it's not in your spine, it's all over the place. But I can say to you at the end of that, and your spine is, how's your spine feeling? It's fine. It's fine, yeah. because it wasn't hurting anyway. Yeah. It is the leg lengthening trick that is absolutely the mark of a charlatan. Healers don't always just heal. 
many claim to channel information from God that they couldn't possibly know themselves. In the 1980s, mass rallies like this showcased the performances of faith healers like Peter Popoff, who claimed that God not only identified the sick, but also, like some celestial search engine, supplied him with their names and addresses. Hallelujah, Louise Cooper, who is Louise? Stand up! He was at the top of his game, until the skeptic campaigner James Randi smelt a rat, and with the help of investigator Alexander Jason, uncovered this. Here it comes. Four two six seven Masterson. I can see the angels of God all around your house. And she's praying for her daughter Joy, who's allergic. I'll tell you, God is going to give Joy complete deliverance. The telephone quality so voice that you hear is Popoff's wife, who's feeding disorders. him information through an Before earpiece, information she's, she's gleaned from, from written prayer requests. And you're going to rejoice. You're going to know. After this deception was revealed on national television, Popoff eventually admitted to it, and 16 months later was forced to declare bankruptcy with nearly 800 creditors having claims against him. And as of 2011, he's back in business, not just preaching to the faithful, but using his slick website to market his own brand of Miracle Spring Water and a supernatural debt cancellation kit. Well, you can sit there next to you, Jeff. Oh, where's PJ? As we approach our departure date for America, we receive a series of emails that give us cause for concern. The Christian PR company in Texas we hired, run by Peter, has been trying to build Pastor James's profile within the local religious community and thereby guarantee us an audience for Nathan's final show in Dallas. Peter has no idea what our true motives are, as we suspect he would not then have accepted the job. However, we realize that tapping into his contacts is vital to us. We pull the production team and trainers together for a crisis meeting. My producer David brings Nathan up to speed. Basically, we've been bombarded over the weekend with lots of very suspicious emails from the PR company. Oh, OK. Um, picking holes in all sorts of things, asking uh, huge amounts of questions. If I was him, I'd be suspicious that we haven't spoken on the phone and he hasn't had an answer personally from an email from me. Reading the questions from Peter, it becomes apparent that some of the church leaders he's already spoken to in Dallas have raised doubts about both the credibility of Pastor James and the reasons why this TV crew are following him. It's astonishing how difficult this is to break into. I think we've already been rumbled. Have we been naive? Yes. yes. And so we take the risky decision to put Pastor James, surrounded by his background notes, on the phone to speak directly to Peter. Hi, it's James. Hello, Pastor James. If Peter suspects that Pastor James is not who he says he is, our whole project could be dead in the water. I just thought I'd give you a call at the end of the day. Oh, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. You can understand over here, we have a lot of people asking questions. That's a good I'm thing like, to hear. That's good. Uh, I, I definitely need some updates from you. Yeah, go, go. I wanted to understand, you refer to yourself as a pastor, does this mean that you have a church that you regularly lead? The, the easiest way for me to describe it is basically when I was in Uganda and I was working with Pastor Lorenzo, when he used to go to other villages he'd leave me in charge and so people started to call me pastor and that's, that's, that's the root of where it comes from. I don't know, that's going, is that going to cause problems or? It's a credibility issue, you know. Nathan has been on the phone for a while and is doing a great job of both fielding Peter's questions and interpreting my hastily scribbled notes. We're going to be filling in every single day with fantastic things that we're going to be doing. We all begin to feel uneasy with deceiving this obviously warm and genuine man as we realize the impact it could have on his business. You have to understand too that our, our relationships also are on the line and we're, we're making a big uh, gamble, if you will, on your credibility. I, I believe you trust you and I think we're ready to receive you and uh, we're looking forward to it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Bless you. And thank you again for the call today. I really appreciate you uh, picking up the call. See you soon. Okay. Love to your family. Nathan hangs up, having been on the phone for over an hour. But instead of relief, there is amongst us an overwhelming sense of turmoil. You okay, Nathan? Yeah, he's just a really nice guy and it's horrible. What if we kill his company with this? His, his family, his business, everything could be absolutely smashed to ribbons because of what we're doing. He's going to feel totally betrayed. He's going to feel utterly betrayed. A lengthy conversation ensues. If we don't have the guarantees of access that Peter can provide, we don't know what we can achieve in the US. We know that we have a morally difficult road ahead, which will involve deception at every turn, but we can't justify potentially putting this man's career on the line. And so we make the tough decision to sever our connection with Peter and his company and try to look for audiences ourselves, something we know is near impossible. So Nathan and I are traveling to Texas with a small UK crew and a large amount of trepidation. 
From the point at which we land, outwardly Nathan will become Pastor James Collins, my co-writer Ian will become his assistant, and I become part of the TV crew who are following him on his mission. We'll only have a few days to infiltrate the Christian community, promote our show, find all important singers and musicians to back us, and to achieve our goal of passing off Nathan as a faith healer. And without the help of professional PR, I have no idea what may lie ahead. I think you need to do a little bit of consulting Nathan about what you want to do, because otherwise I'm just going to be fucked off. It's our first morning in Dallas, where we've come to try and expose what I believe to be the truth behind the devastating world of faith healing. With Peter and the PR company out of the picture, and the healing event only a week away, the enormous task of promoting Pastor James's mission now falls to us. So we've had some flyers printed up. We have James here, who we're passing out the flyers hey. for. Hey. This is Nice in the hotel lobby, Pastor James meets some people we've hired to hand out our flyers, but of course they don't know our true agenda. I would like you to lead us in a prayer. You guys are more than welcome or not to no, of course, um, join in. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Lord, give these loving people the strength to do your work today. Let them be messengers of God, not of man, of God. And may your word Come to as many as you see fit. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Feel good? Have a good day, guys. Having been inspired, they take to the streets with our flyers to publicize the event. But rather worryingly, back at the hotel, Nathan already seems to be finding the deception harder than he imagined. There's going to be a lot of this. The worst bit of it is someone putting faith in somebody and that's somebody's yeah. me. And I'm not what they think I am. Join the UK's Pastor James Collins and guests at the Lakewood Theatre for a unique healing event. Meanwhile, the flyering continues and a local radio station puts out some ads to reach a larger audience. Log on now. Giftsofthespiritministry.com At the end of our first day in Dallas, we go to visit Ole Anthony and Pete Evans, who know the truth behind our mission. They run the Trinity Foundation, a group of Christians who investigate fraud committed by faith healers and televangelists. Who are you? Hello, I'm Darren. I'm you're Darren. Darren. You're, the, you're, the, you're the leader guy. They've been instrumental in a number of high-profile TV exposés and are regularly used as consultants to the U.S. government. As one of the founders of Trinity, Oli has enjoyed being the scourge of the televangelist movement for the last 30 years. I was known as the Antichrist. When we started working for the Senate Finance Committee, now I'm promoted. I'm not uh, Satan incarnate. Yeah. We've come to glean any last-minute advice that Trinity may have to help us achieve our goal, and also for Nathan to find out firsthand the scale of the deceit here in America. I asked Oli what motivated him in his crusade. He recounted the story of a phone call he says he received from a woman right after she had seen him on TV, successfully exposing a televangelist. She had a 13-year-old daughter that had multiple sclerosis. And there was a testimonial, they had these pre-produced testimonials where a woman had made a thousand dollar vow of faith and supposedly was healed of multiple sclerosis. Of course, it was an actor that did it. And so she, unbeknownst to her mother, over the course of a year, paid off the thousand dollars, mostly from her grandmother. So at the end of that year, when she finally paid it all off, she wasn't healed, she was far worse. She called the man of God that told her that she would be healed. And he told her that um, the reason she wasn't healed is that she had secret sin in her life. And this little girl, now 14, went in the backyard and she poured a can of gas on herself and literally committed suicide. And the mother just begged me to do something about this. We are so sickened by what we see these guys taking advantage of people that if you're successful in teaching this guy mm. that you took off the street, quote unquote, to do the same thing mm. that they're doing, there couldn't be a better example to show how foolish these people are to continue to supporting these idiots. You've yeah. got to be a hypocrite for a while so that the reality can be shown. Otherwise, this project will fail because you're the key. We'll do everything we can to help you. Huh? Yeah. 
We had decided before leaving our hotel that it would be useful for Nathan to deliver an informal sermon to a few members of the Trinity Foundation for them to cast their critical eyes over his performance. However, when it came time to set up for this, it transpired that Nathan wasn't at all happy with the lack of prep time he'd been given. I think we need to do a little bit of cons consulting Nathan about what you want to do, because otherwise I'm just going to be fucked off, and then it's not going to be very good. So it's, re it's really up to you. No, no but this isn't, this isn't, of course, this isn't a situation with a... Look, I'm saying it is, so that's all that matters until you convince me otherwise. I didn't do this for any other reason except for when you guys asked me, I would have said no. I said, is this serious? Are we going to do this properly? I'm not an idiot. I'm just going, I'm going to do what I think is right at the end of the day. Because at the moment, we're all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying no, to get... Bombed. Don't worry about it. Monkey will perform, and that's it. Monkey will perform, done. Well, I'm sorry it's been sprung on you a little bit, which I think isn't ideal. No, it wasn't, it wasn't sprung on you on purpose. There'd be no benefit in doing that at all. Um... That's very difficult to believe. Despite Nathan's concerns, he went on to deliver the first part of his act, where he describes his personal history of how he became a faith healer. Um, my name's James, and when I was younger, I had everything. For whatever reason, that wasn't enough for me. At the end of his performance, the audience had an opportunity to give some feedback. Very, very good. You've just started doing this, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. So, I'm not preacher in any way, well, respect at all. You, know, <laughs> you did unbelievable. You learn, but I'm you, shocked. But it's very powerful. I thought you were speaking directly to me. You, you seem to be without pretense, and that's the most powerful thing that you can bring to the table. I'm super impressed, you guys. I really am. That's such a relief. At the hotel, Nathan and I do some more work to give his preaching power and punch. You cannot fill that God-shaped hole with money. And in your head you're going, oh yeah, 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 as you walk away. And that preacher said to me, you cannot fill that God-shaped hole with sex. And that preacher said to me as he looked down the barrel of that television camera into my heart, you cannot fill that God-shaped hole with drugs. So that last with drugs, it's just like literally, don't, don't put any emotion into it, it's just like somebody's shown you two words and you're reading them out. So hole, pause, with drugs, but quiet. Do you want to you just uh, give it a stab? So be very clear, that preacher said to me, and that preacher said to me, you cannot fill that God-shaped hole with sex. I can see Nathan keeps getting better, but I still don't know if his performance will be strong enough on the that night to create the effects me, we need. You cannot fill that God-shaped hole with... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> After the training session, we leave to do some more promotion for the event. And to maximize what little time we have left, with flyers in hand, we head to the Dallas Cowboys Stadium to drum up some more interest. If you like, I'll say a prayer that um, your team does well. I can't say it's going to win. I can only ever ask for well, things to do well. Yeah? Yeah? And later on, we pound the streets downtown. This is having a revival next week, and I'd like to come along, it'd be fantastic. After a long day, and with the temperature dropping, we take our jet lag bodies home to bed. It doesn't feel right for one of these places. We've been told about a well-known local faith healer called Pastor Sean Pinder. Oh, Pastor Sean, sure. happy to meet you. We turn up unannounced to meet him where he's guesting at a small service in the unlikely venue of a children's nursery. Pastor James asks Pastor Sean and his host if he and the camera crew can stay, and luckily they agree. So Nathan takes his place at the back of the room to watch at first hand a genuine healing service. He has an extreme style, and once the crowd are at their most receptive, he starts the healings. If you are Indian, you are hard of hearing, I want you to come up here. You, come here. You're hard of hearing? If, if we close up your left ear and speak to you, would you be able to hear? This man says he's partially deaf in one ear, which Pastor Sean is quick to express as a more nothing. major affliction. You can't hear nothing. Oh, my God. Somebody shout, be open! Be open! 
after the healing moment, it seems as if something miraculous has occurred. Can you hear me? Say Jesus. 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 To prove the man's deaf ear had been healed, Pastor Sean had him face away so he couldn't lip read and had his assistant block his good ear. But from this camera angle, you can see that the man's good ear isn't being blocked at all. So maybe it's not such a miracle. Pastor Sean keeps going with several more healings of the kind we've studied. This lady is nearly able to touch her toes after spending years with a spinal problem. The euphoric service, like many healing rallies, creates a major adrenaline rush. Adrenaline is a powerful painkiller. People feel less pain and can mistake this for their body being healed, especially when a pastor is telling everyone that's what's happening. But they're actually no better, and are still in need of the medicine that many pastors tell them to throw away. Pastor Sean leaves the stage triumphant. The entire service lasted for four hours and has been an invaluable lesson. Then something happened that nobody expected. Nathan is given the chance to plug his own show. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Me, I come from Uganda. I come over to the UK. I was following a vision. I got given by the Lord. He said to come to Texas. He said to come to Texas and preach his word as far and wide as I could. We're having a revival on Saturday, Lakewood Theatre, 7 p.m. God bless you, Pastor James. God bless you, Pastor. I love you, man. When encouraged to do so, the congregation are very happy to hand over their cash, which is collected by the man who was healed of his deafness. The whole thing was very powerful, and I can't touch, in terms of performance and energy, what I saw in there tonight. I feel bad for my duplicity, I feel bad for my being a spy, basically. But the business of their profession is to get as much money out of people as possible. They should be talking about faith and love, and it's always about money. So we've just come up against the kind of security that these, these people have at Derren, D-E-R-R-E-N, Brown. And we may not have a show at all on Saturday. Having spent six months training Nathan, our diving instructor, how to be a faith healer, I now want to show him some examples of the ministry lifestyle. So we hire a car and set out to visit the headquarters of the Kenneth Copeland ministry. Copeland's unflinching and dynamic style is typical of preachers in the prosperity gospel movement that's closely allied to faith healing. We live in a trillion dollar economy and you're broke. In the prosperity gospel, the biblical idea of as ye sow, so shall ye reap is interpreted financially. Give the pastor a donation and you'll receive a hundredfold back from God. And if you don't, it's because you didn't have enough faith. Here you can see Copeland displaying his $20 million tax-free jet, seemingly as evidence of the Lord's grace, his congregation's generosity, and his status as an A-list preacher. Somebody ought to shout amen! We arrive at Copeland's compound where he lives and houses his fleet of private jets. So these are the gates of Kenneth Copeland's house. Uh, or compound ranch and we are already being uh, watched by security there. this is where the money goes we leave quickly before we're asked any awkward questions however as we're driving back we see the main gates to the church and airfield are open so we drive in and head towards the church and then we discover how protective they are where did he come from hello folks oh hey. uh, I have a call about three suspicious vehicles. We're making a documentary style film. We're from England. We have a pastor with us who's... Hey. Okay. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. The local sheriff has been called by Copeland's security team, and after some questioning and discussions with them, the sheriff takes details from some of our passports. Like Darren, D E R R E N. We're concerned to see that this information is then openly shared with Copeland's private security. Security has told me that they've spoken to this gentleman at least twice about no, that's filming. Not, that's, uh, uh, no, I'm not, not, I'm not having that because that's not okay. true. As the security personnel for the ministry, they have the authority 
to do this. I will issue each of you, in one big group deal, a criminal trespass warning. Which means if we set foot on Copeland's property within the next 12 months, we will be arrested immediately. So we've just come up against the kind of security that these, these people have. The worry, though, is now they've taken our detail. If they Google me, they can find out what it is that I do and where I come from. If they search for you, they can find out that that isn't your real name. They've also got our details for the, uh, for the show. The concern is now they could work out what we're doing. And we may not have a show at all on Saturday. That's our concern. Faith healing doesn't just affect those in pursuit of a miracle. John Edwards was a practicing preacher working apparent miracles at his ministry. His daughter died, aged 14, from a brain tumor after he delayed seeking medical help, believing instead that God would heal her. After 10 years, he became disillusioned with faith healing and bravely told his congregation the truth. I asked him about some of the healing techniques being used. What you do is you start pumping the meeting. We're having a healing meeting. So and so, evangelist, so and so is going to be here this week. If you know someone that's sick, get them here. They're going to get healed. Mm -hmm. And you're emphatic about it. Mm. They will get healed. I don't care if they got AIDS, birth defects, cancer, diabetes, anything. They're going to get healed. So there's already the adrenaline's running. It's hypnotic. If you have 300 people there, somebody's got a toothache, somebody's got a backache, somebody's got upset tummy or a headache, and he would say, uh, tell me how long your head's been hurting. Do you believe that when I lay hands on you that you'll be healed? Yes. And they're like, Jesus! <laughs> like that. Adrenaline shoots through their body, and the pain's gone. Yeah. So they're going to come off the floor, and they're going to say, I'm healed. Well, they got healed of stuff adrenaline affects. But yes. when it comes to a paraplegic, a brain tumor, Down syndrome, amputees, have you ever seen meetings where amputees got their legs back? No. no. That seems to be missing, yeah. Now my definition yeah, of miracle is different. Yeah. Back then, if you had a toothache and it went away, that was a miracle. Yeah. This is so difficult. This is so difficult. And I keep having to remind myself that it's important. People throw away their medicine and they die because they believe these people are healing them. People give their last penny to this movement, money they can't afford. People that don't get healed are told to blame themselves because their faith wasn't strong enough. When I speak to people that have had first-hand experience of how nasty that world can be, it keeps me going. It reminds me that it, it is important. We're halfway through our US adventure. Nathan's hardly had a chance to let his hair down and today's his birthday. So we throw a surprise party in my luxurious low ceiling suite, complete with tacos and real American champagne. It's a welcome bit of light relief for everyone and Nathan can leave Pastor James at the door and spend a couple of hours just being himself. Nathan's experience at the faith healing service earlier in the week made a big impression on him. And Pastor Sean Pinder was certainly not shy in front of our cameras, and so we call him up. We thought that if we could get him to our revival event on Saturday, it might help increase the attendance. So, we, if you... as my wife, listen, we're going to be there. I feel like this is a God moment, our Pastor James. So, I will be there. We're treading a very fine moral line, and it's a difficult position for Nathan to be in. Having met Pastor Sean, I can see that Nathan is again having conflicting thoughts about the continuing deception. You know the Lord's work, our Pastor James. We've arranged a rehearsal for Nathan and the musicians involved in the show. He's also meeting his worship leader, Brenda, for the first time. More than just a singer, Brenda's an experienced worship leader. Her job is to create the right atmosphere for the event and to get the audience into a receptive state before Pastor James takes to the stage. So yeah, I've explained that you're, um, you're going to be going through the sermon as if there was a full audience there, so you don't need to worry about that seeming too, seeming, you know, odd. It's vital that Brenda and the band believe in Pastor James and his mission, so he needs to stay in character the whole time. But we learn that Brenda has some friends in Uganda and is keen to chat with Pastor James about his experiences there. Yeah, I just avoid talking too much about Uganda in detail. Or enjoy it and see what you can get away with. Um. <laughs> Oh, 
I spent the last good part of the last 10 years in Uganda. Nathan is hitting the Ugandan issue straight on, which may be an overconfident move. And having introduced himself to Brenda and the band, they continue rehearsing whilst we discuss our game plan for the day. I tell Nathan that I think it's a good idea to rehearse the whole sermon here, which he's not happy about. And despite being in full view of everyone, a difficult exchange ensues. Just, just to get a sense of the music coming on. So it is a good idea. And that's yeah, what do you want me to fall apart and be shit? Or do you want it to be good? No, no, I just want you just to, just to bump through that a little bit. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You've got to keep changing stuff. Fucking believable. He was getting rather stressed and started swearing at the, uh, the bongo player word. It's not good. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. I'm aware of Nathan's discomfort with this situation, but I think it's important for him to see it through, despite the obvious tension in the room. Thank you all for having me here tonight. My name is James. This isn't the first time that his nerves have affected Nathan in this way, and I'm concerned with how he's dealing with pressured situations. Should we move towards the end of the testimony? Yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're doing good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> At least somebody thinks so. After the rehearsal, I talked to Nathan in the car park about what had happened. How are you feeling in yourself after that? That they must smell that something's a bit odd about all that. When we were having that conversation about whether you were going to give a little bit of the prayer yeah. section or not, and you were getting quite stressed about that, and you ended up going, it's fucking unbelievable. And you were seen doing that, and the bongo player kind of saw you. <laughs> don't make out one time I blow up. Don't, don't, just don't keep pushing something that we've agreed on. And that was what we were talking about. You can't say this is fucking unbelievable in front of the band. You can't do that, mate. If there's something you don't understand, you go, look, should we have a chat about this? You remain in character. We agreed on something, and yeah. then you seem to change that again just before I'm about to go on. Yeah. As if the pressure of the situation is going to make me do whatever and you I may, want. I may, and I agreed yeah. what I was going to do, then you changed it. Yeah. If you do that just before I go on, then you're not going to get a very good performance, are you? If that happens again, if you feel there's a conflict, for whatever reason, we've spoken about it, something's changed. Don't Whatever. Create the conflict is the answer. We're gonna, there's going to be a lot of conflict. We've got two <laughs> days. There's going to be a lot of conflict between now and Saturday. There's going to be a lot of stress. You have to handle that stress. And if you can't... Darren, this whole, this, this whole thing is stressful. This whole thing is a yeah. weight. So you I take handle me... it all the time. But if you're going to push me to the nth degree, then I'm either going to leave the building and not do this at all, or we can do what we agree instead of changing it at the last moment. Because that is just... I don't understand how you think that's going to help me do this well. You feel that healing power, you feel that healing power. Can you feel that? Yes. Can you feel that? What's it like? What does it feel like? It's a tingling feeling in my leg, man. To give Nathan a bit of breathing space, we leave him at the hotel and head off to see the notorious local faith healer W.V. Grant. In 1996, Grant was found guilty of tax evasion and the undeclared use of $375,000 in donation money to buy a luxury home. He served 16 months in prison for that. Grant has gone right back to what he does best, ministering from an ex-car showroom on the outskirts of the city and broadcasting his services worldwide on a live internet stream. There it is, in the name of Jesus. When you get up, you won't have that cancer. He's still making miraculous and wide-ranging claims for the results people can get, from increasing their wealth to curing life-threatening illnesses without the need of medical help. You're restored. You're getting a new liver. You're getting two new kidneys on both sides. We knew we would never get permission to film openly, so we allocated tiny spy cameras to different members of the team in preparation for some secret filming. This is a high-risk venture. Being discovered by Grant's security could jeopardize our whole mission in Dallas, as we know people have been detained and questioned when suspected of covert filming. But we feel that the gamble is justified to potentially highlight what we suspect may be going on. With another camera hidden in the car outside, we attempt to try and record everything that happens, and not just what's chosen for streaming on Grant's website. So, carefully scattered amongst the faithful today in the former car showroom with its garish drapes and small stage are our sound man, the producer, my co-writer, my makeup artist, and me. Just as with many of the faith healers we've observed, Grant picks people in the audience about whom God has apparently given him information. There's five letters in your first name and five letters in your last name. Right. Nick? Somebody named Nick? Nicole? Nicole? He constantly stresses that he has no prior knowledge of these people and that they've not told this information to anyone. You've not told this to anybody? No. You haven't told this to anybody? 
Never. You can tell this to anybody. No. But before the service started and the internet camera was switched on, we were all asked to fill in a contact card asking for personal details, just like the prayer cards we'd seen used in other ministries. So would you keep your hands raised? Our ushers are going to give you a little information card to fill out with your name and address. My producer David has written down his name as James. Today my name's going to be James Lee. My secret camera is going to be hidden behind this button. This is a simple test to see if Grant is using the information from the cards to tell people's names. Come here, brother. So when David's called up, we all wait with bated breath to see if the Holy Spirit will discern his real name. You've not talked to me or anything? No. And God said, I came here to restore you. I, I brought you, there's a five-letter word that begins with a J. James? Yeah. Your name is James? Yeah, 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 that's my name. So it seems that Grant's inspired knowledge may be less than supernatural. Somebody give the Lord a big hand. All this simply by sowing a seed and investing in Jesus financially through Pastor Grant himself. If you're writing a check, make it out to Eagles Nest Cathedral. It'll be tax deductible. If you want to sell the credit card, bring that down. I'll touch it. Somebody will run it. There are four people here that can sell a couple hundred dollars into our ministry today, and somebody can sell a couple thousand. So God's going to give you the FFO, the faith and favor and opportunity to, to become a millionaire for his glory. Although I'm not chosen for healing, I do leave with a present showcasing Grant's singing talents. Woo! I got a CD. The reason for choosing an ordinary person to be a faith healer is to show, as I believe, that the healing is not God's work. Anyone having been taught certain tricks and techniques can do it. As you know, pain is a very subjective thing, whether it's the adrenaline of a, of a big show or just somebody telling them with enough confidence that the pain is gone. There are many videos online of street faith healers supposedly curing the sick. So on a cold Dallas morning, I take our former scuba diver out to see if he can do the same. This will be more of a challenge than working with a receptive congregation, but I think Nathan's ready to do it. Any Alman, tell me about it right now. Pastor James, you got any pains? Have you got any pains? I have pain in my leg. I had surgery right here. They said it was in that pain. I had a rib put in. And I always when it get cold, it's always... So you got a plate in there? You got a plate? Yes, sir, right here. The first person okay. we find is in persistent pain from a metal plate in his leg. It hurts a lot, right? So when you get up, I bet when you get up from a, from a chair or from here, you got to push yourself up with your arms. Whereas when you were younger, you just, just sprung up, right? Yeah, right. I'm going to put my hands on your leg, okay? And I want you to think about the pain you're in right now, okay? And that's a 10, okay? Nathan knows the techniques. This is his moment of truth. Dear Lord, this man's plate in his leg is causing so much pain. That plate's so cold. You're warming it up right now, Lord. You're warming it up right now. I can feel the man shaking in your power. I can feel the man shaking in your power, Lord. You get that pain right out. You get that cold right out. You get that. Can you feel that? Yes. Can you feel it? What's it like? What does it feel like? What can you feel? It's a, it's a tingling feeling in my leg, man. Stand right up. Stand right up. You don't have to push up. You don't see? You didn't have to push up this time, right? Remember we were talking about it? You had to push up? The man is very moved and staggered that his pain has gone. You told me that pain was a 10 before, right? Yes, sir. Okay. What's that pain in that left leg right now? You can reduce, hasn't it? That pain, zero. High five. You got any aches and pains? Not what? Your back, lower back. So I want you to remember, what I want you to remember right now is how bad that pain is right now. Imagine that's a level 10, okay? Lord, let the power of your Holy Spirit pass through this man. Let that pain be gone so this man can move freely. Amen, I can feel that heat. Can you feel that? Because I can feel there's a lot of heat. I'm just, it's all here. Stand up for me. So it's a 10 before, right? So it's a 10. So what is it now? Three. Two. Three, two. Can you touch your toes? Did you do that so easily? Did you do that before, properly? No. You couldn't do that before? No, I had a car wreck like two months ago. Man. You were in a car wreck two months ago and you've had a pain in your back since then. What did it feel like? It was gone. God. These people aren't really being healed, but they are experiencing pain relief brought about by suggestion. Nathan heightens their expectation and they respond accordingly, their minds at least for a while not feeling any pain. Put your hand on top of mine. It works okay. on every single cool. volunteer. Can you feel that? Because I can feel something happen there. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah? What I want you to do, extend your legs, put your feet into my hands. Okay. He even tries the old leg lengthening routine. So this leg is shorter by an inch. Can you see that difference? Just Telling people their problems are caused by having one leg shorter than the other, and then manipulating a shoe to create the illusion that a leg is lengthened. Stand up, stand up, walk. A favorite trick performed by healers who claim that it's real. Jesus has healed you, right? Afterwards, we tell all the people Nathan healed the true nature of what we're doing. This guy isn't really a faith healer. We carry on finding more people and keep getting the same positive results. Is that more difficult to do before? Yeah. So with a 100% success rate, Pastor James has healed the sick. I'm astonished.
at how effortless it is. But the nature of pain is clearly so subjective that in the same way that you don't notice you've cut your finger sometimes until you look down and actually see yep. the blood and then suddenly it starts to hurt. In the same way it can go like that if somebody just has you believe that it's gone. It's the evening before Pastor James is to take to the stage and preach to an audience of genuine believers. Uh, how are you feeling? Um, I don't know, it feels like the quiet before the storm really with me because before we had our rehearsal this afternoon I was thinking, oh this feels a little bit better because I'd worked through some few things and then the rehearsal felt quite good, not mm -hmm. perfect, no, yeah, nowhere near good. perfect, good. but good quite good. Today, yeah. Whereas yesterday, I don't know, with the musicians. I felt like I was a million miles away from everything, yeah. You have been amazing though, you have been, I know it's been really stressful some of this, but you have been, you have been, you have been amazing. Your performance is excellent and I think that's, that's what this is about. Just make sure I do it tomorrow. Yeah. Congratulations. Cheers. Well, see what happens. <laughs> and so we all head home for an early night, unsure of what tomorrow might bring. You cannot fill that God-shaped hole with money, with sex, with drugs. Make this man healed, amen. This has been an exhausting roller coaster journey. Six months ago, Nathan was a scuba diving instructor with a dream of being on TV. He applied for a show without knowing its true nature, and I chose him to become my fake faith healer. Thank you, Thank you Nathan. Once he'd accepted the task, he underwent months of training in a variety of skills and tricks before heading to Dallas to put all his hard work to the test. But the moral dilemma of dropping the PR company left us struggling for an audience and the cracks began to show. You're going to push me to the nth degree, because otherwise I'm just going to be fucked off. But despite all the hurdles, Nathan has completely embraced Pastor James. You feel it? You feel it? And is now as ready as he'll ever be to give the performance of his life. I just want to get up there, see what I can do, and just be true to everything we've spoken about. It's Saturday morning, and we're at the Lakewood Theatre in downtown Dallas. Everyone involved is busy preparing for tonight's show. We've been promoting this event all week, but after deciding not to use the Christian PR company, we still don't know if anyone will turn up. This will be the culmination of Nathan's journey. When I first had the idea for this project, I never dreamed it would be so difficult to get to this point. Dear Lord, bring strength into all of our hearts tonight. Nathan joins everyone together in prayer in a moment of calm before the show. Amen. Amen. Come now and just worship the Lord. It's 7 p.m. and time to open the doors for our big night. This moment here will go down in eternity. Our promotional efforts this week have been successful and a small crowd has turned up. Brenda gets to work and does a fantastic job as the worship leader, getting the audience on their feet and into the spirit of the occasion. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Amen. And with the crowd warmed up, it's time for guest speaker, Pastor Sean Pinder, to take control of the mic. We were in a service last week. There was a young man in that service. His left foot was three quarters of an inch shorter than his right foot. Whilst we prayed for this young man, the Holy Spirit touched this man and grew his leg out evenly with the other one right before everybody's eyes. With Pastor Sean's preaching filtering through the walls, Nathan has a last few moments to brush up on his act. But I feel Jesus is getting ready to pass up something. I feel like something. After Pastor Sean heats up the atmosphere in the room, he hands over to Nathan. And masquerading as Pastor James Collins, the moment of his final task arrives. Oh God, you ready, brother? Amen. Hey, 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 sing Amazing Grace. You, you can do it. It's all yours. Can this ordinary man, a diving instructor, convince everyone here that he truly is Pastor James Collins, the visiting faith healer who's able to work miracles? My life, I had, I had everything you'd want, everything you'd want as a kid. But for whatever reason, that just wasn't enough for me. And I found myself turning to drugs. If Nathan is nervous, he certainly isn't showing it. And his first story about his fall from grace and subsequent redemption has his audience engrossed. The next thing I remember, I woke in that hospital. But I think you know, I think any of you here right now know, you know who got me there. And I praise the Lord now, because he got me there. 
He got me there. I'm very impressed with this performance and the audience is really moved. That preacher said to me, you cannot fill that God-shaped hole with drugs. Who knows the power of those words? Stand up and praise me if you know the power of those words. Hallelujah. As Oli from Trinity predicted, his open style seems to strike a chord with the congregation. He's effortlessly reciting scripture. Just like in Matthew 8, when the leper said, Lord, if you are willing, I will be healed. And for the next couple of hours, he seems completely happy in his skin as Pastor James. His power is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Forever his power is the same. With the audience eating out of his hand, it's time to change the tempo. The Lord is speaking to me. And it's as though I could tell any one of you something the Lord is telling me right now. Owen? Your name is Owen, right? Just as we've seen with other faith healers, Nathan has been fed inside information about some of the congregation from contact cards we had them fill out before the show. Owen, the Lord has a plan for you. He sees you singing in front of thousands. He doesn't want you to worry about your family. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. There are Moses here tonight. The Lord is telling me, Moses, that you're worried about condition of the blood, diabetes. Is that right, Moses? I have type 2 diabetes. I can see you glowing, Moses. We all feel uncomfortable deceiving the people in our audience, but I remember only from Trinity's words that we must be hypocrites for a while so the reality can be shown. Praise the Lord. You're a mighty servant, Gilman. You're a mighty servant. And then it's time for people to be slain in the spirit. This is the point where faith healers supposedly channel the power of God to allow the people they touch to experience an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Give him your power. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. And with the hypnotic atmosphere built up, our scuba diver creates exactly the same effect we've seen so many times before. Amen. Amen. Two hours into the show, we reach the part where most faith Hallelujah. healers would ask their congregation to donate to their ministry. Instead, we have a very different message. I want to talk a to small you. gospel of truth about the dangers pastor. of trusting in such faith healers. I want to talk to you, not as a healer. I just want to talk to you as a fellow human being. I have seen many fraudulent healers leave people confused and dangerously, dangerously misguided. Those this is a carefully worded speech designed specifically not to question anyone's faith, but to make them question the motives behind some faith healer's requests for cash. I say this because I care, I care a lot about every single one of you. Those preachers that we spoke about who say, throw your pills away. It's also to explain what healing is and isn't, and to warn people of the dangers of rejecting conventional medical treatment. Sometimes a healing can occur that really only changes in the mind. Adrenaline and euphoria. These are powerful things and they act like temporary painkillers. And that's why in healing events, you don't see severely handicapped people. They're pushed to the back. And many, many of these healers, as they call themselves, they twist scripture and they take money from people who can ill afford it. Who can ill afford it. As I stand here today, I do not believe he is at work through these so-called healers. God doesn't want your money to make you well. What a travesty to the message of Jesus to say you have to pay for God to heal you. That's not what the Lord preached. That's not what Jesus preached. And who here believes Jesus speaks the truth? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I truly pray that you will take away tonight that knowledge that your worth in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ, your happiness, our health, are in no way related to the amount of money you take out of your pockets and hand over to these so-called healers, these, these supposed men of God. I hope each and every one of you will find your place in heaven, where you can praise his mighty name for all time and eternity, and that the Lord carves a special place for these people in hell. Unsure of the overall reaction, we exit quickly and leave the area of the theatre. We didn't get a big enough audience to do everything we wanted. I think we did a good thing. Oh. 
Uh, no, I know we do a good thing. Yeah? Yeah, we did do a good thing. That's what I remember you said to me a long time ago, if we just helped one person. And I think there's more than one help tonight with that. Um, it's worth it, isn't it? It's worth six months of... Yep, yeah, absolutely. ...stressful... Absolutely. ...argumentative work. <laughs> <laughs> I only swore a couple of times. <laughs> Well done. Well done. This particular fraud shows no sign of slowing down. People fooled by it can be left in a spiraling depression when they see God won't heal them, or refuse medication which they believe would show a lack of faith to accept. And they're making many healers absurdly rich in the meantime. We've got one last day, so we return undercover to W.V. Grant. Hello. Hi. We're from London, England. There was some, I yeah, there was I some English guys. Yeah, I think there's a few around in Dallas at the moment. <laughs> and lo, the angel of the Lord came about. Yeah. Jerry, your brother James is here. And the Lord shone around about God showed me his name in the prayer line. The 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 yeah. Before Grant takes to the stage, another pastor with the same dress sense reminds us of the potential rewards of the prosperity gospel. I prophesied to Marilyn Thompson in this church. God gave her a new Cadillac, new husband, new Jaguar, and a four-carat diamond ring within seven days after I prophesied. Eventually, the internet stream goes live, and W.V. Grant deftly weaves new technology into his old-style preaching. The last three pictures on my iPhone were three people that got out of wheelchairs and pushed me in San Antonio. And this time, Grant selects me for a healing. Come up here, young man. Come on up here. Watch how you walk through this limp. I don't... <laughs> Have, have me a chair. Oh, yes. How many sees that? Is that obvious? The leg on your side is about three inches. Three inches shorter than the one on my side. Well, that's, that's close to four inches. You, you believe God gave a new vertebra? You believe he can go back to London shouting? In the name of Jesus. It's coming out. It's coming. Look at this. Look at this. In Jesus' name, it's coming out. It's coming out. It's still coming. Give the Lord a big hand. Look at this. Hallelujah! So in December 2010, live on the web all over the world, you would have seen my leg miraculously lengthened. Praise the Lord for slip-on shoes. Take off your shoes. Dulce and Gabbana. We've spent the last six months ensuring that what we've done is not an attack on sincerely held beliefs or decent church goers. This isn't a comment on faith, it's not a comment on the church, it is an attempt to expose what I believe to be a systematic and manipulative exploitation of the vulnerable, where greed can ruin people's lives and all in the name of God. This week celebrate the wedding of the year. Channel 4 is the only place you'll be able to see it because it's a big fat royal gypsy wedding on Thursday at 9. Apparently there's another matrimonial event this week and we've decided to be a bit cheeky about it. The Royal